Today, you'll learn how to use Google Cloud's free tier. So Google Cloud Platform has quite a generous free tier. Um, these products are always free to use. The Compute Engine is an E2 Micro, two virtual CPUs, and one gigabyte of RAM. So this is actually quite enough to run a fairly solid little web server, which I'm gonna show you how to do today. I'll show you how to install a web panel. This is Hestia Control Panel, really nice free control panel where you can install a lot of common web applications. WordPress, I use that a lot on the channel, but you've got Nextcloud, Laravel, Drupal, whatever you like, and this uh, panel makes it really easy to use. So um, I do know that um, Google Cloud Platform does look quite complicated and scary to look at for the first time, but there's actually not a lot to do in here. And once you've done this, you probably never really need to use this stuff again. Um, by the end of this tutorial, you'll have a WordPress website set up, but you'll also have this panel where you can install other stuff if you like as well. So all you have to do, head over to Google Cloud. So that's cloud.google.com slash free. Go through the sign up process. Once you're through that sign up process, just head over to your console and we can go ahead and build this thing. All right, now that you're signed up and logged into your Google Cloud console, we're over at console.cloud.google.com. Uh, the interface is gonna look like this. Don't worry about how complicated this looks. There's only a few um, parts of this that we're actually gonna need to use. So the first thing we go to is Compute Engine on our menu here. And the first time you look at that Compute Engine option, we'll need to enable the Compute Engine API. So click Enable there. It does take a minute for that to enable, so be patient while this happens. Now that the API is enabled, we are under Compute Engine and VM Instances. Now we'll have this screen here where we can create an instance. Now we can give our instance a name. I'm gonna call mine IdeaSpot Tutorial. Now the region here is important because in the free tier documentation, we can see there's only three regions that are allowed on the free tier compute engine. So that's um, US West one, US Central one, and US East one. So make sure we choose one of those. I will choose US uh, Central one. There we go, US Central one. And there we go, US Central one, Iowa is on there. US Central 1 Iowa, just make sure that you got your um, correct region there. And then the zone, it doesn't matter, we can choose any of these. Um, I'll just leave it on the default one, they chose C for me here. Again, this is important, the machine configuration type, we need to choose E2 Micro, this is the one that's available on free tier. As we can see back on here, we can see E2 Micro VM instance is the one that's allowed on our free tier, so make sure you get that right. All right, now scrolling down the boot disk here, we can change this. And we can see that at the moment we've got balanced persistence disk, 10 gigabytes inside. If we look at our allowed specifications, we can actually have 30 gigabytes standard persistent disk. So we want to change that to standard persistent disk. And then we can create that one up to 30. So um, you may as well max that out that on 30. Our operating system is set to Debian by default. Um, I'd prefer to use Ubuntu for what I'm doing in this tutorial and the version will change that to 2004 and go ahead and select that one. The reason I chose Ubuntu 2004 is on hestiacp.com, the panel that we're installing today. Ubuntu 2004 is the most recent uh, long-term support version of Ubuntu supported here. And now scrolling down, we wanna allow HTTP traffic, HTTPS traffic. And then I'm gonna expand this networking disk security and management thing here. And I put the one that says networking there. And scrolling down here, we've got uh, network instances. Let's expand that one there. And you'll find an option here called network service tier. By default, this is set on premium, but you can change it to standard. Now, the reason I mentioned this is uh, by default, we get one gigabyte network egress. So we get one um, gigabyte of network out from our server to, um, from North America to all regional destinations except for China and Australia. So anything more than one gigabyte of um, network data that you use per month is gonna get billed. So if we choose the standard one, that is gonna be a bit cheap. I'll show you what I mean. If we click this compute engine pricing, load that up, uh, head to network pricing there. And then scrolling down, we can see our pricing. So uh, where is it? internet egress rates? This is the premium tier pricing here. So. Um, everything for your first gigabyte is free and then over one gigabyte, you've got 12 US cents. And um, for most of your traffic, uh, USA, and then for China it's 23 cents, Australia is 19 cents. So um, that's for premium tier. But if you go to standard tier, standard tier is only eight and a half cents uh, per gigabyte. So if you want to keep your cost down, we can go with standard tier and 
we can save a little bit of money here. But if you're very low traffic, as we talked about before, you probably won't exceed your one gigabyte network egress. You might get a few visitors from um, China or Australia and you get a few cents charged. But um, this is the only part of the free tier that's likely to incur any any charges. If you go to cloudgoogle.com slash product slash calculator, you can actually see the network egress charges here. Um, internet egress to um, the one we want to use here is usually premium tier to the Americas. And you've also got uh, standard tiers down there at the bottom. So if you had um, two gigabytes of a standard tier, you can estimate that 17 cents for one month. So enough on that. I think we'll just use standard for this demonstration because it's going to be cheaper if we exceed our if we exceed our limit for the month, for example. And I think we're pretty much good to go here. Now you may notice this stuff here, the monthly estimate saying how much this costs per month. Don't worry about this because all the um, free tier items that we choose automatically get deducted from that. So if we actually look at our free tier documentation there, um, all the things that we've chosen are going to be free. Um, the only thing you have to think about is that network traffic because only one gigabyte is free there and anything exceeding that will get a few cents extra depending on how many gigabytes you use there. So as we can see earlier, uh, very low traffic websites going to be extremely cheap to run here. We can basically click create now. So after a minute or so under our VM instances, we can see that we've got our IdeaSpot tutorial instance running now. We can actually copy this external IP. This is the one we need to add to our domain DNS manager. So we're going to take this IP. I've got my domain over in Namecheap, but wherever you've bought your domain, you will want to add this IP to our DNS. So in Namecheap, that's called advanced DNS. It's going to be similar wherever you bought your domain from. We're going to add some records for this. So the A record, the root at a record points to the IP address. And we're going to need a record for the panel as well. So in my case, I'm going to use um, HCP for a Hestia control panel. Um, but you can use your own custom control panel subdomain if you want. Um, it's optional. Um, I'm going to point it to the same IP there. And uh, we do want a CNAME record as well. So CNAME record for www. We point that to IdeaSpot site. So the domain I'm using for this demonstration is ideaspot.site, but your domain will obviously go in that spot there. Now we will need to wait a few minutes for these changes to actually take effect. So I like to head over to whatsmydns.net and um, just check that these IP addresses are set up and working right now. So over here on whatsmydns.net, I've plugged in ideaspot site. We're searching for the A record, clicking search there, and we can see that it is hitting the IP address for the most part anyway. This should be fine to go ahead and proceed with the tutorial. So we are ready to connect to our instance. So there actually is an SSH client embedded into Google Cloud. We can actually open it in our browser window. So we click that one there, and this is actually gonna open a console to our virtual machine. So we just wait for this to connect here. So our console is gonna look like this. Don't be intimidated by using like a, a console directly. This is pretty simple, and there's only three or four commands that we're actually gonna use. I'm gonna make this a little bit bigger so we can see it. Um, there we go. Uh, the commands that we're going to use today are here. So I'm going to put these over on my blog at ideaspot.com.au. So there's going to be a link in the description where you can just copy and paste uh, these commands as you like. So the first one we're going to change to sudo. So we can actually um, right click paste things in here and that will change that to the hash mark. We're operating as root now. We can start um, installing our panel. First thing we do is download our install script using wget and we get our Hestia install script there. That will go ahead and download. Next thing we do is install the Hestia um, control panel. So I'm gonna paste in the command that I'm gonna use. Now you will need to change this a little bit. So um, the email, you need to put your own email in for that part there. Um, the password, I've just made up a, a password there. You wanna use your own password obviously. And the host name, this is gonna be installed on Hestia's control panel, idea spot site. So whatever we used for our um, Hestia control panel subdomain, we're gonna put that in there and go ahead and press enter. So now it's gonna start installing our, our script with any luck, here we go. So it says, welcome to Hestia control panel installer please wait the installer is now checking for missing dependencies so this is all going to um, install our control panel it's going to take a few minutes but we can see it's working so just let it go ahead and do its thing here so it's going to get our nginx 
um, web proxy server. So that's our caching with Nginx. This is a Apache web server backend. And these are all the other features that we've got here. So it does take a little while for all this to install. A few of you have asked me previously, is it possible to run just Nginx with no Apache? Yes, it is, but you do need to use a different install command. I'll show you how to uh, find that. So while our panel's installing, I can talk about this. So hestiacp.com, we can actually look. Um, we've got some examples of how to install here. But we've also got this one called install string generator. So you can go ahead and select or deselect things that you want or don't want in your installation. So if we didn't want Apache, for example, we could go ahead, click proceed there, and it will, it will create our install script that we want to use. Um, but that's completely optional. Um, everything works really well with um, Apache and Nginx caching. And so what we use today was actually the, um, the recommended uh, documentation defaults here is what we basically used um, when we set this up. So we can see this is still ticking away. So it does say 10 to 15 minutes to complete. So let's actually, we can actually do something else while we're waiting here. So VM instances in our compute engine, we can set up firewall rules because there's one more particular rule that we're going to need. So we need to create port 8083 for using the control panel itself. So create a firewall rule there. And let's just call it Hestia so we can remember what that's for. And we are going to want to use uh, TCP 8083 and our targets. Let's put all instances in the network. We're only going to have the one instance, so we only need that there. Um, source IP ranges. And for making the uh, port available, we want to use 0.0.0. .0. 0, 0.0 slash 0. So put that in there. I think that's all we need. Okay, go ahead and click create. It's creating our firewall for Hestia. Um, AD83 is what we use by default. Um, if you're using Cloudflare, this is over on my blog here, you want to use 2083 rather than AD83, but you need to run this command in your console later um, to change the system port to 2083. But that's for using Cloudflare. Um, for most DNS management, um, we can just use that 8083, but I know a lot of you like to use Cloudflare, so just be mindful of um, of that when you're um, using Cloudflare. Obviously, I have done a full tutorial where I have installed Hestia with Cloudflare, so I'll link that in the description as well. But anyway, we can see back on our firewall here, we've got our new rule in there, Hestia allows port 8083 on TCP, so that looks all good. I think that's basically all we need. We just need to come back in 10 to 15 minutes when this is finished installing. So just um, just go ahead and wait. All right, so that is all done. Now we can go ahead and type reboot and we can come back in a couple of minutes um, after this has rebooted. It's worth noting that this definitely took a bit longer than 10 or 15 minutes. I think the, um, the drive that they've given us on this free tier probably isn't as fast as typical drives. So just, just be aware of that as well. But that pretty much wraps this up. So our instance is working here. I mean, if you mess anything up or you want to try something different, um, you can go in there and you can delete the instance and you can make uh, new instances again, set the firewall rules there. Um, all that's pretty straightforward. So from now, if we actually head over to HCP IdeaSpot site on port 8083, so that's colon 8083, we can actually get to our login screen. We can go ahead and log in to Hestia control panel and set up websites or other applications. All right, so to log in here, our username is going to be admin and we click next there. And then our password is going to be the password that we chose during the install command. So that I put mine in there, but you'll need to keep an eye on whatever you used to install Hestia, but that password goes in and then we can go ahead and log in. So now we are in our Hestia control panel. So from here we can control our, our web server obviously so the most important thing is web we can install websites web applications and things we can look at our files in our file manager uh, we can do backups um, but let's go ahead and start doing a website and i'll show you how that works so we can see we've already got one here that's our control panel uh, is all set up already but let's add a web domain here and it says we're going to uh, strongly advise to add a standard user before we add web domain so let's just add a standard user as well so let's call this one Alex and just fill that out with um, username, name, email and password there. And then we can go ahead and click save. The rest of that can be default. And we've got our success message there. We can actually log in as our new user with that link there and that will automatically log us in. So now we can see we're logged in. I'm logged in as Alex now rather than admin. We can start adding our web domain. 
So here we can go ahead and put our domain in. I'm using idea spot site to do this. And we pretty much just uh, leave these as is and go ahead and click save. And there's our success message. We can go back to our web icon there and we can see that we've got um, idea spot site is now installed. So we can go to that pencil icon. We can see its details. From here, we can actually add SSL for the domain. We can use a Let's Encrypt certificate to do that. Enable automatic HTTPS redirection looks good. We can have a look at the advanced options, but all that looks fine. We can leave that on default and then we can save that in. Now this does take a minute because it's going to issue that SSL certificate. So just be patient while that goes through. All right, so that looks all good. Now we actually, if we head to our website, idea spot site we can see that we've got our, our landing pages set up here with our ssl padlock working so that looks all good we can actually go to our quick install app installer here and this is a really nice feature in hestia's control panel because we can install um, all the common uh, content management systems and applications i really like nextcloud and wordpress obviously so i'm going to install wordpress on this one but there's a few nice choices here um, we go ahead and fill this out so this is just the site name, the username, email, and a password there. Go ahead and install that one. So that was actually pretty quick to install. If we reload this page, we should see our standard um, blank WordPress site here. We can actually log into our admin panel. So I'm just gonna put slash wp-admin here, and we can log in with the credentials that we just used. So, so just fill those in there and go ahead and log in. And looks all good we are in wordpress so from here you can go ahead and go to appearance and theme start building a site you can install a migration plugin and import an existing site but um, all pretty straightforward if you've ever used this before and if not there's plenty of tutorials on the channel on how to use wordpress so i won't cover that in this video the other thing that i'll mention is uh google is not allowing this to be used as a mail server port 25 is blocked but there is a workaround that i have done so if you do want to set up mail on here um, go to my previous video because i have done a setup tutorial you just skip to the mailbox setup in that video here i'll link that in the description as well but basically um, i'll show you how to link it up with a service like send in blue or uh, MailJet. both of these have free tier um, SMTP services so you can actually send um, I think about 300 emails a day on this one I think 200 on the other one which is fine for this kind of scale of project and that will work around um, Google um, not allowing this to be used as a mail server they obviously don't want um, uh, the free tier service to be used for spamming so um, that's unfortunate but that, I like if you want to do that you can work around it using this method I've shown previously in terms of performance, I've just gone ahead and installed my usual favorite Cadence starter template site here. Run that through Google PageSpeed Insights. It's getting a 90, which is solid. Um, it's not as good as other services that I've tried, obviously, but I mean, for free, I guess it's not too bad. The other thing I did was install the WP Performance Tester plugin and ran that through, and we can see that... Um, it's about the same as industry average. So that benchmark ran in 2.4 seconds. Industry average is 2.3. So pretty standard there. This is pretty similar to what you'd get um, with your typical budget shared hosting. So it'd be okay for basic sort of projects, but um, it's nothing uh, to really write home about. So in conclusion, I think uh, Google Cloud is definitely not quite as good as the Oracle Cloud free tier. So definitely um, try the Oracle. If you can't get Oracle working or if you can't get access, I know a few of you couldn't get access to Oracle Cloud free tier, you can try the Google Cloud free tier. Um, the other thing I quite liked was this one on X10 hosting. I thought this was even easier and the performance on here was very, very good as well. So um, try that one out. Um, as well as an alternative. But I mean, this Google one wasn't too bad. The one thing I really didn't um, appreciate was this quite um, relatively low one gigabyte network um, egress, and it excludes China and Australia. So it will um, uh, accumulate a few cents worth of data if a traffic is going out to China or Australia from your project. So I didn't really like that, even though the pricing is, is still pretty affordable, like we saw earlier. <laughs> There's lots of cases of people running their, their website or application just for uh, two or three or four dollars per, per entire year using this. So it's still obviously great value, but I don't think you can say it's completely free because of that issue. 
And um, But anyway, try it out because uh, you will notice that in your header there, you've got 90 days of actual credit. So you can actually monitor how much um, credit your project is actually using in reality. So you can check it for 90 days and then go ahead and, and um, go ahead and delete the instance after that if you're not um, keen on using it further. But it's worth learning Google Pl Cloud Platform anyway if you're interested because um, just a cool thing to, to try out. It's very complicated, obviously, but um, just another skill set you can add to your collection. But I think that pretty much wraps it up. Let me know if you uh, enjoyed the video or if you have any questions in the comments there. But thanks for watching. I'll see you next time.